you so much for letting us gather together tonight. It's our desire to walk closer with you, to understand your word more, that we might minister to those around us. Lord, anoint us to be able to set our world on fire with the knowledge of the holy, your word, your presence, your love, and your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody turn with me to Acts chapter 1. And for a couple of weeks, we're going to be studying the return. Return of who? Return of Jesus. Here in Acts chapter 1, he is about ready to ascend into heaven. And starting with verse 6, he, it says, so when they met together, they, all the people around him, and other sections of Scripture tell us there were 500 people surrounding him on this hill. They asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. And earlier in Scripture, he says, only the Father knows these dates. Not even the Son knows. Only the Father knows. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken. Everybody say taken. He was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Et pi ro, taken. Et pi ro, taken. He did not leave. If I decide to walk to this door, hit this crash bar, and walk out, I am leaving. That is not a pyro. A pyro would mean that something, some force, would have to grab a hold of me and take me away. The context is such that he did not use any of his own power or, or volition, but rather he was simply taken. Like I take Leroy's pen here, now it's no longer here, there, but it's here, taken. He didn't give it to me, I took it. A pyro, taken. Jesus was taken before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men, dressed in white, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? And this is where I want to focus our attention for a few minutes. This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This same Jesus, not a different Jesus, not a metaphoric Jesus, not a spiritual representation of Jesus, not anybody who purports to say, the spirit of Jesus is in me, therefore Jesus has returned. What was told the apostles up on this hill is, this same Jesus, who has been taken from you, Ana Lombano is this name, is this word. So, what we can gather, by the way, before we go on, from this passage is, the word epiro and Ana Lombano are synonymous. It's describing the same occurrence. That is, Jesus being taken from their physical presence, not by his own power. He does not leave, but he is taken. A lot of, pe a lot of people, when they hear that Jesus ascended into heaven, they think that because he had some telekinetic power or he could defy gravity like Superman, that he just decided on his own, on this particular day, I'm going to leave. That's not what happened. And that's not what the exegesis of this passage says. He was taken, not of his own volition, nor by his own power. And these two words, Ana Lombano and Epiro, 
are synonymous. They mean the same thing because they describe the same event. This same Jesus. Now the word here for the same Jesus is tropos. Say that with me. Same. I'll write that one down too. Same Jesus taken. Same. Tropos. This same Jesus. Now this word tropos is fascinating to me because of what Jesus has said in the past. He said that many will come claiming to be me. Don't listen to them. The word tropos comes from the word trapo. And trapo means shifted or altered. Shifted or altered. So if trepo means shifted or altered, what does tropos mean? Changing the middle of the root of the word means not. Not shifted. Not altered. Not changed. So in a way, you could actually translate this word, this Jesus, not an altered Jesus, not a shifted Jesus, Not a different version of Jesus, but this same Jesus, which is why, to simplify, most modern translators translate the phrase as same. But it goes beyond same. It's not a shifted version. For instance, not a substitute. Can you tell this chair from any other chair in this room? For most of you, it looks exactly the same. And I could substitute one for for the other. But in the case of here, tropos, what the meaning is, is I want this chair, this very same chair. I want to sit in this chair later tonight. When I'm drinking my coffee after I'm done with all this yapping, and I sit down and I have my coffee, I want this very chair. Now, the way I'm using that phrasing, that means... If you get me any one of these chairs, any of the other 50 chairs in the room, that's not tropos. This is, this is the chair I want. This very same chair is the one I want to sit in. Here, the angels are saying to the apostles and 500 people that are standing around on this hill, this same tropos, Jesus, without being altered, without being changed, which is why, as a theologian, I have such a difficult time understanding why anybody would see somebody coming in the guise of Jesus and understand them to be him. Why anybody would buy into the explanation that what was meant here as as we talk about Jesus' return is another version.